Uh, and I think so. We have our guests here. Uh, we've given some time for folks to come in, and I think we're ready to get started. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining us today. For those that don't know me, I'm JD. I lead the community operations here at Agora Copco. And I'm joined today by a few other members of our team. Uh, first off, Miguel, who some of you have gotten to know. He's our community marketing manager. And then we're also joined by two members of the Agora Copco BD team. Uh, we've got Deep here as well as Neve. And so uh, let's start with some introductions. Uh, Jeet, I'll turn it over to you first. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeet Mount, and I lead Ecosystem at Agoric. Um, so things I primarily focus on is both finding builders as well as speaking to other blockchain projects to see how we can work together technically. And I'm based in New York City. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone. This is Niv. I uh, I recently joined uh, Agoric less than two months ago uh, to help lead the BD partnership efforts, growth uh, strategy. Uh, I've been in the space. Quick, quick um, overview of my background. I've been in the space since 2017, mostly with consensus, uh, leading BD and ecosystem initiative across different vertical use cases. Uh, I left consensus last year and I've been focusing on the zk privacy space. So I was working with the Oasis, was leading the BD at Oasis Network, which is also a, a project that has been around for a long time, focusing on privacy tech. And uh, and uh, so in general, I'm focusing a lot on on my passion here is mostly about tokenizing everything as well as enhancing the builder's user experience. And that's what got me uh, to get in touch with the Agoric team. Once I I learned about the orchestration vision, I thought this really got my attention. I think it's a it's a very interesting vision, uh, and I think the team is strong, and the community is strong. So um so obviously looking forward to uh to to you know to push this space forward and together with you and, and together with the team. Great. And yeah, um, Neve did just join recently around the same time as Miguel. And uh, if you did miss it, I just dropped in the chat the link to our blog post announcing them joining. And while we're at it, Miguel, do you want to give a quick intro? 100%. How's it going, everybody? Miguel, community marketing lead here at Agoric. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a really good conversation here with the BD team, uh, especially since these questions were specifically asked by community members. So excited to hear, you know, what, what the team has in response to all of you. And then, of course, you're listening to us right now. You're in the audience. We appreciate if you share, like, and engage with the tweet that we pushed out about this space. Uh, or if you're listening to us in the future, thank you. Appreciate it want to hear from you as well, any commentary or any follow-up questions that you may have from hearing us speak today. So super excited to, to get to these questions. Yeah, and uh, as you said, these, uh, these questions all came from the community. So just to give some context here, this is our, uh, our usual community AMA. Uh, this month, we had to just move it around to accommodate a very busy event schedule. And uh, so today we'll be going over some questions that were asked by community members in this red started when we announced this AMA. Um, so uh, let's get let's get right into this here, and I'll start with uh, um, Neve. Let's start with you. So, what kind of teams projects have been showing the most interest in Agoric's orchestration API? Yeah. Okay. So so. Before we dive into the specific team, so so uh, one 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 word about the, the the where we are right now in terms of the BD strategy and, and how we see it moving forward. Um, we uh, we just so the team just uh, released the orchestration API uh, for the interchain ecosystem and, and in terms of roadmap. Uh, the the next things we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna focus on the EVM and Solana, but uh, so so from what does it mean from the BD? Uh, from my perspective, is is basically our focus and our media short term focus is mostly about getting a Goric on the momentum train. So focusing on what does it mean? It's 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 aligning with our product roadmap. Is even we are now live for the interchain. It's focusing a lot on the Cosmos ecosystem. 
So we see how many project there, you know, interact with many project there that uh, can benefit from orchestration and see how we can onboard them. And, uh, and at the same time also, um, you know, getting on the momentum uh, uh, phase is, is more about becoming more public, uh, interacting with the ecosystem more often, and being more present in events and conferences, and really uh, spread the messaging of orchestration. And, and next, the next stages are going to be uh, uh, when when we get to the when we are ready for the EVM. It's going to be more about positioning orchestration as a multi multi chain uh, platform. Um, and specifically to your question, JD, about the project, I think uh, and, and probably Jit can add a lot more context to it. We see a lot of interest from different projects. Um, either, either it's from the builder, you know, the early stage, uh, small project that are looking for a way to leverage that one about to bootstrap their project quickly and looking for a way to unify liquidity and enhance user experience. And they see orchestration as a good, as an excellent tool for them to, to achieve it. And we also see from my side, we see a lot of interest from, um, uh, from a project that are that today actually have users and uh, either from the staking space or from other space where they uh you know they are looking for a way to either enhance the experience or really solve the fragmentation issue and they can and they're coming to us to do to, to, to understand exactly how they can use orchestration thanks for that and just because i heard you mention it right at the start of your answer um i'll ask one of the other questions of are you focusing only on cosmos and ethereum ecosystems at the moment um so we are so in the immediate focus is mostly on, on cosmos as well as starting to build the pipeline and the relationship with the evm uh, but uh, we are, you know, we are operating in 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 parallel. We are uh, we are driving a, a sh you know uh, an immediate demand for orchestration as well as building the pipeline for the mid long term. So we are also interacting with other ecosystem, uh, including, for example, Solana. We just uh, we just went to Breakpoint in Singapore, which was a great event. A lot of focus on how they can uh, abstract. A lot of the blockchain enhanced user experience and access to more liquidity in different ecosystems. So we are talking with some of the project there as well about potentially how we can, you know, how we can design our roadmap to to Solana uh, sometimes in 2025. So, so to your question, yeah, the immediate focus is mostly Cosmos EVM, but we are definitely open to discuss other ecosystems as we plan and build our our roadmap. Awesome. And Jeet, I'm going to turn over to you now. Um, so you've kind of alluded to you'd be good to answer to this. So maybe how many teams are you speaking to each month? And to just combine two questions into one, when you're speaking to these teams, do you need to explain a lot about what Agoric is? Yeah, and uh, yeah, thanks for those questions. Um, how many teams are you speaking to a month? So I, I was I was at permission this last week, uh, two weeks ago, was mainnet in new york city and before that was token um it's kind of hard to fully quantify but i'm speaking to a bunch of teams right now um and what's really exciting is think especially about what we're doing with orchestration is that genuinely there are people like oh okay like a lot of the other projects are like this makes a lot of sense and we want to see how we can integrate orchestration into our workflow for users and developers um i can't put a specific number on it but i'd say i'm speaking to at least about 30 to 40 teams a week uh, about this um I had a great dinner with um, yesterday with some folks who worked at uh, Coinbase and Polygon. And, um, you know, when I'm talking about what orchestration can do, it perks up a lot of ears, primarily because it really is actually solving a problem within the crypto space, right? Um, user experience is not the best. Um, whether it's, you know, yet again, is, is it fragmented liquidity? Is it just difficult to move things around? Is it automating a lot of workflows that, people who regularly use crypto on chain do, um, we can help a lot with a lot of those. And, and, with, and just to the second part, do you, do you often find yourself having to explain a lot about what Agoric is? Yeah, so it's interesting, right? It'll kind of depend on who I'm speaking to. Um, people that have been in the space for some time, a, a lot of them have a good 
idea of what a Gork is. Um, everyone within Cosmos definitely knows a Gork. Um, and then I would say Ethereum kind of just depends on what aspect they're working on. I would say, for example, they're probably like um, less so in something like DeFi, but if I'm speaking to people working more on just like, um, like you know, L2s or people working more on like core infra, then they're a lot more familiar with Agoric. Yeah, and I guess that, that makes a lot of sense considering, you know, Agoric is a long time Cosmos uh, OG project, if you will. Um, so when you're speaking with these teams, and this is for either one of you, um, what features besides the orchestration API are people most interested in? Uh, yeah, so I, I, can, I can. Yeah, sure. I, I can. I can take that. Um, I think so. The the two things is um, one is just the 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 composability of how you know the reality is a lot of what people do on chain is relatively common, right? Um, there's definitely like smart contracts that are being written out that are very specific. I, I think getting you see this a lot more in DeFi, but a lot of the kind of user flows within, let's say, more like traditional. Uh, fintech applications of crypto, whether it be payments or, you know, uh, you know, sending cross-border payments to other people or just, uh, let's say, e-commerce, um, tend to be a lot more similar. So um, something we're hoping to do is, you know, as we're, as we're talking to more and more folks and understanding use cases and, and just user flows of what people need is actually making this readily available within the API. So it's much easier for people then who want to onboard a lot of these great features just to be able to do it. And then in addition to that, um, add in custom composability of like, specific features or specific flows beyond the more traditional and common ones that they want to put in there. And then I would say as well, right, like we can really help a lot with the user experience. Being able to make something that's like 15 or 20 steps in terms of like different transactions you have to sign. Um, and also, you know, we have things like timers on chain. So th doing things like subscriptions can be a lot easier and finally done on chain, um, which is pretty exciting as well. So these are the kind of things that, um, as I'm speaking to people, that are really resonating with a lot of the other projects. Just, uh, just to add uh, even a little bit more context, I think uh, maybe from a different perspective is, uh, I think uh, crypto space is a uh, project are, uh, I will say, are uh, kind of uh, are looking for a off the shelf solution to some extent. So they try to understand orchestration and how exactly it can benefit them. But in terms of integration and, and collaboration, I think they're, they, 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 most of them hope to see, uh, uh, you know, off the box solutions. So less, less about, you know, less wasting a lot of time about exactly, you know, how to connect or integrate, but how exactly they can start work with orchestration today. So, uh, so I think this is one, one element that we will try to focus on as well to how we can make the a platform more, you know, productize it so that project can, can use it, uh, um, yeah, you know, can start to work on it pretty quickly. Yeah, th and th thanks for adding more to that. Um, so uh, uh, um, on to the next question. Are there any emerging trends that Agoric can capitalize on? For example, Uniswap L2 or Penumbra Privacy, et cetera. Uh, Neve, I'll turn to you for this one. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure G tells us as well. I can. I can. Everyone, maybe G want to add another one. I. I think from uh, since I, I spent some time in the privacy space, uh, I, I know. I know. I, th I think privacy slash confidentiality is still a big missing part in the crypto user experience, and and it's something that will have to be resolved at some point if we want this to actually go mainstream and be adopted by. Uh, and millions of people uh i'm so we are already i think this is an, a, a, a space where we can uh, orchestrate ca orchestration can enable privacy protocol to enable more rich uh, functionality by part you know connecting both the, the privacy capabilities with the, with with the cross you know the the, the orchestration uh, functionalities we are already talking with a team and exploring uh, potential use cases there and how we can uh, demonstrate something to the uh, to the market and we also saw uh, you know uniswap uh, collaboration with flashboard how to minimize how to use 
you know, TEs and privacy to minimize MEV. So I think this this will only going to grow and become more uh, uh, key uh, subject to a lot of project and use cases. Yeah, I just add on to that. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, um, we're speaking to a couple other uh, Cosmos projects that work in the in, in the in the privacy space. Um, it'll be cool to see the benefits of orchestration applied to something like shielded pools, right? Um, yet again, right? Like as as we get deeper and deeper into crypto and it becomes more and more mainstream, um, I think we'll find that privacy ends up being more of a common default feature versus uh, something that's like a bit more novel and unique. So, um, you know, we're, as we're speaking to these teams, we'll hopefully have some announcements out next couple of months. But uh, yeah, we're really excited specifically around privacy on, on what we can do. Because part of the thing as well as like with the interoperability of everything within crypto, um, privacy can also be both a first and last step um, where we can do a bunch of things. But then once you get things into shielded pools, let's say, for example, um, it makes it, it, these are kind of the applications that, that are going to be more common as this goes mainstream, so we want to be there um, orchestrating a lot of these actions. And thank you both for, for, for those in-depth answers. So while we're talking about these trends, um, can any orchestration competitors match or Agoric capabilities? Do you want to take that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can take that one. Um, so there's a, you know, and, and it's kind of, um, the analogy here I really think is it, this all kind of takes a village, right? Um, if we're thinking about like the other members of the kick framework, right, that the founder of that, right? Um, we're running the shoulders of many giants and I'm working with a lot of other teams on this as a whole. Um, it actually really is going to take a bunch of us doing a bunch of different things. We are uniquely positioned in what we can do for orchestration because of the feature of the Agoric chain. Um, Multi block execution, async await, timers on chain, right? We, we have robustness that we can add in that very few others can. But one of the really great things is that um, we can work with a lot of teams and it's it's not us versus them. It's really us collaborating together to add a lot of value to to folks, right? Um, the good example would be something like uh, solvers, right? Um, and intents. Um, though we have certain pathways that can be great for so many things, uh, working with these partners opens up all these other opportunities and like uh, cost optimization benefits to end users. So yet again, I, I really view it in my mind is that like there's of other, what we can think of direct competitors, Agoric has a lot of features I think that puts us ahead. But if we think about the chain abstraction spaces, um, we're really just competitive to what everyone else can do. All right, and so let's uh, come back to you, Neve for this next one. What, in your opinion, are the low-hanging fruits that can be quickly harvested? Um, and this is, could be in sort of in the context of which chains can we connect to for orchestration or what sort of applications would benefit most? Yes, yes, for sure. So so again, again, a little bit of, you know, stepping back, we are, you know, orchestration, we are going to introduce orchestration in the beginning of this year. And we, we have been building since then, focusing on building and enabling this uh, this platform and the functionalities. And, and and now that orchestration API is, is live and available for the Intel chain community, I think that will be probably our, our, our you know, the target ecosystem that we might be easier for us, the low hanging fruit for us to, to partner with. We just announced a partnership with Ellis Network, which is a, a new project in the Cosmos ecosystem, a new DEX that's looking for ways to uh, minimize, reduce the, the steps users need to, to take in order to uh, stake and restaking. So that was a great collaboration with them and, and we're looking forward to working with them to get them on chain. We are about to launch to announce another partnership pretty soon with another interesting uh, uh, project and use case. Uh, so I think to, uh, and we and we are talking. We have, we have some other project pretty advanced in the pipeline uh, that we we we're probably going to announce in the next few you know of the next few weeks. Uh, as I think, all in all, we are you know mostly focused on or right now. In the next few weeks, we are mostly focused on the Cosmos ecosystem, and we, we're going to be at Cosmoverse next week. 
hopefully talking with as many projects as possible as well as having our own event there uh, so um so that's the main focus but at the same time so, so and i think we can get some more interesting project there as well that would be uh, uh kind of uh and um, you know the low hanging fruit for us I think you slightly hinted here about the future. And I think that's where a lot of community members, uh, you know, threw their questions into the hat about, you know, what, what are our goals for the next couple of months? Um, you know, what, what does that look like for, for you guys on the BD side? So, so, so for my side, it's really uh, there. There are there are two. I think there there are two goals that run in parallel. One is to uh, increase the visibility of Agoric and and increase the visibility of our orchestration solution. Make sure that the the ecosystem really understand how orchestration is different from other chain of structure and solution, and 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 kind of try to lead this category of orchestration. Uh, which is, I think, it's it's it has its own category, and at the same time, try to capture on all this uh, traction and interest and start, you know, uh, orchestrate everybody and, and and integrate orchestration into a lot of the uh, automation and flows that's going on. So um, uh, it's really about. Uh, um, it's really about uh, so, and specifically talking, we we as a BD team, we we kind of goal, you know, our goal is to announce, I would say, something between, you know, we hope to not to get something between five to ten partnership we can announce in every quarter in general. So we, we, what what it means basically is probably a, 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 you know announcing a partnership every two three weeks. Uh, and start build, start position, you know, start getting orchestration into a position where it's it's not just a technical solution; it's a it's as its own ecosystem of partners and collaborators that are using the the, the platform. Anything, anything out there, G? Um, and, and sorry, what's the question again? Apologies. The goals. What do the goals look like, at least yes. for you? I know Nib yep. gave you his perspective. Yeah. So goals for me specifically is right. We have a lot of partners in the pipeline. Um, things that we want to do whenever we're announcing a partnership. Things we want to focus on is not just you know, oh, it's just it's not just two names with a, with with an X between on, on a on a picture that we just blast out on Twitter, right? Um, really thinking about the use case and really thinking about the benefits of like why why this partner actually cares about orchestration. How this can actually benefit them. Um, so at, at a high level, right, we want to get like real authentic partnerships, really highlighting why and how this technology is so powerful. Uh, beyond that, for specific goals, um, similar to what Nib said, is we have a decent amount of the pipeline right now, and in just getting a, a new part, like a good new partnership announcement out with a strong use case every two weeks. Um, yet again, just we, we really believe. In the power of orchestration and really think that we can help out a lot of teams and it again this is currently just in the ibc interchain phase right um once we get to other ecosystems we think we can really scale that out so just momentum as you have mentioned several times momentum use cases and then really over time also thinking about how a lot of these projects can even be orchestrated together right if we think about these building blocks of uh, the composability here can add just tons and tons of really both like interesting and novel and some very useful features that make the experience of crypto feel a lot more like a, a Web2 experience where the, the UX really is front and center right along with just a benefit to the user. Um, so we just want to really be powering all that. Yeah, just yes, everything Jit said spot on. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, to, to his point, it's really it's it's enough. It's getting the partners, but also starting to develop the on-chain activity and traction for orchestration. We want to see more and more uh, um, traction going through orchestration, and and for twenty twenty five, I would say mid you know mid around you know beginning mid twenty twenty five, start to position orchestration more as a multi-chain 
and in a multi-chain platform. So hopefully, we'll, we the pipeline will we win it. We will be able to expand the pipeline and add uh, more interested, you know, partners from other ecosystems. So you guys briefly mentioned, I know G just mentioned non-IBC. So can you guys elaborate a bit? Is there a way for non-IBC enabled chains to use Agoric? Uh, and if there is, um, what, what would it take for them to, to enable to use uh, orchestration? Yep, so I can speak to that a bit. Um, part of it is the way that, um, so within Cosmos, right, we have interchain accounts, um, which lets um, do just message sending, right? Um, you can use an Agoric smart contract to control actions, like user actions on, let's say, Osmosis, right? Um, part of what makes orchestration so robust is that ability. Um, so when we first start out, we'll be able to just get assets to other ecosystems, but over time, um, we'll develop the technology, and that'll basically allow other ecosystems to have very similar interchain account type abilities. So once we can actually control the actions, let's say you're doing a variety of things in DeFi and Cosmos, and then you can move it over to Ethereum and then do similar types of controlling actions within uh, the differing uh, Ethereum and EBM chains there. Once we stitch this all together, you can have these like massive user flows. Um, especially I think in DeFi, this adds a lot of, lot of really interesting opportunities of what can be done like truly with cross chain DeFi, with we're both actions on both sides versus just oh, we're just doing a simple swap here and then just moving it over to this other ecosystem. So I think we can really superpower a lot of, a lot more of these complex user actions. About, how about you, Niamh? Anything, anything there? Uh, not, I, don't, I don't think I have anything to add. I think you did pretty much cover it all. Um, I uh, I do I, I would say that I think you know projects people are uh, the projects that are outside of IBC I think they even they they're showing even more interest and and demand for orchestration given their size of liquidity and the pool of users they are serving so we are definitely we are already talking with some multi-chain platforms that are looking for how they can leverage orchestration so we this is something definitely on our mind we, we orchestration is a multi-chain platform in the end of the day and that's where we're, that's where we're going where, where we are heading to so um uh for now you know uh, so that's 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 the vision that's where we want to go to so uh hopefully we'll be able to enable more and more projects from different ecosystems start use the platform uh pretty soon So I think as we're getting close here to the end, uh, we had two more questions. Uh, the first one is, so how can, how can the community help? What, is there any ways that you know, they could help BD? And I think me and you, JD, we could actually jump on, in, on this one as well. Is there anything that you know, community could be doing to help, help us and achieve these goals and you know, some of the things we spoke about today? So from my side, I can say community is super important. It's the core element of everything in, in crypto. I just give an example, our partnership with Ellis, the introduction came from someone from the community who thought that it might be a good, good, good idea for us to start talk with each other. It would, would be some good synergies there, which appear to be very true. Uh, so any, any introduction that you think, any potential collaboration that the community I remember think that would be useful we were more than happy to to engage with as well as uh any feedback about uh, um you know how we can better amplify the orchestration messaging and you know places that we they think that we need to be in or any other initiative that we should you know they think we should be involved in yeah on on my side i, th I think part of it is you know there's a lot of new I mean, ideas from the community are always welcome, right? Um, I'm on the ground a decent amount, and I speak to a decent amount of teams, but there's always more feedback that we can get. There's always um, a lot more things that we can do. Uh, and it, yet again, right, just any kind of new ideas, um, please drop within Discord, and I'll, you know, I'm regularly in contact with Miguel and JD or, or, or on socials, and then um, 
let them collect those ideas and see what can be actionable from there. Because yet again, um, we have a few brains between us, but as a community, we have so many. And being able to leverage those resources is phenomenal. And I, I would, uh, from for me to give some answer to that, you know, I think we've already had a, a lot of community members have been sharing really great ideas and keeping us up to date on projects that they're following. And that's something that, as you do that, it's really helpful for us because there's times where I haven't seen something. And so when it comes in, I'll share it with other members of the team. And then another way to help is certainly just, uh, I think Neve said, amplification and just get out there and you know in, engage when these announcements are posted um and uh and yeah just participate in in the uh, discussions and these amas um it's always helpful when, when for for the uh, community to join us here yeah and then again to add on i think we a lot of what we see of we see it so if you guys push it and you guys give a response we see it and i think the biggest ask i I think this whole group can agree is just time it's a little bit of time some of these things do take a bit to you know come to fruition uh some ideas that you all share you know might be already in the pipeline or there's a process inbound to just you know, execute on some of these things that you are all sharing and giving suggestions to do. So with that being said, there's one last question. Any alpha? Um, yeah. Did you want to go first? Maybe sure. Sure. Um, yeah. Alpha. Um, you know, um, it's not saying too much, you know, we have things coming down the pipeline. Um, could be related to Bitcoin, could be related to privacy, a bit of AI, right? We, we have some things coming that'll be coming out in the next few months that we're really excited to finally announce. But uh, yeah, just to just keep an eye out for all that. Yeah, I will say, I will say, uh, um, I think I think uh, to some extent uh, some crypt- the, the crypto space uh, uh, or maybe the chain of action still kind of I think underestimate the power of focus creation to some 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 extent. Uh, I think um, I was just a permissionless and there was a stiff debate between two projects about the right way to do multi chain and chain abstraction. I think uh, the more the, the more we move forward, a lot of these elements will be. Uh, commoditize uh, and the more sophisticated use case platform that enabling more sophisticated use cases and, and streamline a lot of this will be um, uh, you know will be able to flourish and, and stay above of this uh, trend so I will definitely uh, you know my alpha is orchestration and in same in the same way it's also privacy I think is a, again is a still underutilized space where is there's a lot of development going under related to orchestration and with not relate you know without relation to orchestration so if you're looking for a space to to check out check the the privacy space you know i asked i asked any alpha and i could feel the the smirk the smiles the 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 want to want to say more than what we can because i know there's a lot in, in the work so you know i would i would take community if you're listening to us now you know, take that for for what it's worth, you know, there's for sure a lot uh, that will be coming in the next couple of weeks. So again, I know this group in particular is super excited to be able to share that as they trickle in. And for sure, we'll be at Cosmoverse uh, in the next couple of days. So we're also excited to see uh, our community, whoever ends up uh, showing up at Cosmoverse, will have a booth and we'll have uh, some nice speaking opportunities out there, which we'll kind of be sharing throughout the next couple of days. So there you all are well informed about, you know, everything that we're going to be doing. So again, JD, I, I, some good questions. Those are really good questions that came in from community. I think that, you know, BD team showed out today. You have some fantastic answers, some great uh, download of information for everybody to just kind of digest. And, you know, for sure, I think it was, it was a, uh, 
long overdue just to have have the group and the team come back to uh, this community AMA and answer some questions that people have been asking recently. Yeah, absolutely. And definitely BD has been something the community has been very interested in. And so being able to directly answer the questions that they had is really great. So thank you, Neve. Thank you, Jeet. This has been really great. A um, couple of things as we're wrapping up. So the recording will be available on, on YouTube shortly after this, uh, as soon as it just the processing time to get it posted. And then join us for the next AMA in November. Our guests, TBD, uh, that'll be some alpha that I can share in Discord when, when the time comes. And then, yeah, stay tuned for updates from Cosmoverse throughout all of next week. And, um, you know, as, as the events are going on, uh, share your thoughts, you know, engage with the tweets, post in Discord, send us DMs. Um, always happy to chat with everybody. 